Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp. I have a lot of clips, and I got a lot of show, and I got a lot to talk about in terms of city council report. They're talking about all that uh, vaping, and they're talking about how they're going to um, institutional, uh, basically uh, put into place a ban on vaping in inside uh, public places and public parks. So I'll get to that and more after I kick it off with a little bit of weather. It is currently 21 degrees outside. Your high is going to be 37. Your low is going to be 25. For Thursday, things are going to warm up just a little bit for just enough chance for a slight chance of rain and snow, maybe washing away some of the snow that's fallen. But it's going to start cooling down again, so we might peak at Thursday. Friday, it's going to be a high of 40. Saturday, it's going to be a high of 37. And I'll uh, tell you more about this uh, this Friday about how the weather may or may not change. So here is um, from onthesnow.com. So onthesnow.com is a good resource to find out how much snow has fallen on your favorite ski and mountain resorts here in Montana. Um, Whitefish Mountain Ski Resort had six inches of snow in the last 24 hours. Blacktail Mountain Ski Area had nine inches. Snow Bowl had two inches. And the rest mostly had zero inches. But of course, in the last 72 hours, you can see that they had three inches in Big Sky. Bridger Bowl had 19 inches in the last 72 hours. So that probably has lasted a, um, more than the the past 24 hours. Um, Lost Trail didn't have any fresh powder. Discovery had four inches um, in the last 72. Uh, Showdown had two inches and most of these other places hasn't had any fresh snow in the last 24 hours. But if you want to find out more about current weather conditions and how much snow has fallen on your favorite slopes, go to onthesnow.com. Uh, moving on, let's talk about some news uh, that are happening. MCAT did a live stream um, uh, just last uh, Monday. And there was a fair amount of people at the Missoula Rises community discussion last night tackling sexism, a discussion with the University of Montana where they invited Coach Bobby Helk of the, of the, of, of the Grizz uh, University of Montana and others from the university and community did a live stream with MCAT uh, via our Facebook page. And of course, here is uh, the reason. Uh, so Lisa uh, Davey was um, basically made a uh, um, petition to uh, basically uh, against the rehiring of Bobby Helk last uh, yet yeah, last year. So here's a clip of the reason why she decided to do that and why uh, um, and she explains about uh, the reason why Bobby Helk is the uh, was the reason that created the climate that uh, uh, the climate that, uh, let's see, the climate of the University of Montana that required the DOJ to come on down for sexual assaults and other things as well. There were no reported rapes during Hawk's tenure. Um, I really want to remind you that no data was kept. Uh, so we don't know whether they happened or not. Uh, and there were many barriers to reporting. Um, we've talked about how uh, when people are in positions of power, um, it's much harder for people to come forward. Um, and so if you're an 18-year-old or 19-year-old girl on campus and you've been assaulted um, and you've just watched the head football coach um, yell at some student reporters for asking about um, another assault, uh, that's a barrier to reporting. Uh, the arrests uh, read like a list of escalating incidences, including domestic and partner assault, um, that demonstrate power the same way rape is used to exercise power. Um, the fact that as soon as Huck left, women started reporting rapes, uh, I think can demonstrate the potential power a coach holds to create an environment whether or not it's safe to report. Uh, I also want to say that none of us are blaming Sheila or Seth for the current state of the university. Uh, and while I disagree with how Flugrad handled the sexual assaults, um, I personally felt he was left a mess to clean up, um, including stopping initiation parties that Huck allowed to have happen. Um, and so for me, um, when I thought about how coming back, um, I really saw this downward spiral where we had 14 arrests in three years and 12 of those were when he was coach. And for a um, reason, I appreciate being here to be part of constructive dialogue on something that is epidemic in every corner of our country and every aspect of our lives. I mean, I've, I've got daughters and I also have a son that's college age. I, I care. I want them in a safe environment, like all parents do. But it's, in, it's important to have civil discourse, as was mentioned a minute ago. And we have to be able to do that sort of thing. And we can't just throw bombs at people. We need to have actual civil discourse and come up with solutions and results. And I think that doing things such as this uh, speak volumes. I mean, we, we all came here of our own volition tonight. It, it was, this is not a university sanctioned event. We're, we're here because we're, 
uh, the same reason I came back, chose to come back to Missoula, is I think this is a great place. It's my hometown. It's where I want my kids to, to be. And I think uh, having the ability to discuss, once again, a topic that was is epidemic all over our country, probably in Hollywood is the, is the epicenter of it at this point. It's not exclusive to Missoula, the University of Montana, or college athletics. It's, it's rampant everywhere, and uh, awareness is a, is a great step forward. And the last quote was uh, from Bobby Halk, uh, uh, upcoming coach of the Grizzly football team. So, uh, of course, those are the main focus uh, that everybody was uh, very interested in seeing. Um, this uh, program was uh, sponsored by Missoula Rises. MCAT live streamed it through our Facebook page. You can find that on our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. The discussion with Athletics Director Kent Hasdam, UN President Seth Bodner, um, Missoula Rises founder Aaron er Erickson, who also was the moderator, Drew Colling, Director of SARC, which is the Student Advocacy, uh, Advocacy Resource Center. All these people and more uh, talked on this um, topic on Monday at the Wilma Theater. So this was an hour, 45 minute runtime. Um, you guys can watch the whole thing, like I said, on MCAT's Facebook page. Um, let's skip to national news. Um, lawmakers from both parties say that they want to take action to prevent another deadly attack like the February 14th shooting at Florida High School that claimed 17 lives. Dis disagreements over gun control measures go beyond a clear partisan split between Democrats and Republicans, leaving even the most popular bipartisan proposal stalled in Congress. Uh, Senate leaders uh, had hoped a fast track to uh, a bill to improve the national background check system and send it to the House for quick co um, consideration, but conservative uh, Senator uh, Mike Lee from Utah placed a hold on the bill, uh, preventing speedy passage. House Speaker Paul Ryan uh, told uh, reporters Tuesday that he did not plan to take any, up any gun measures until Senate acts first. Many re uh, Republicans oppose any limits on gun rights for most people. Ryan said that the House is focused instead on preventing criminals and people with history of mental illness from accessing deadly firearms. So that concludes all of that. I have a uh, PSA from uh, the Missoula because uh, March is March for Meals. So when we come back, we'll have an interview with Colleen and Larry. Join Meals on Wheels in the annual March for Meals to celebrate the seniors in our communities and the ways we can all support them. All across the country, communities will join together to take a stand for the millions of seniors struggling with hunger and isolation. So join the march. Celebrate March for Meals in your own way. March with us. Go to MissoulaAgingServices.org to see how you can help. Stop by or give us a call at 728-7682. Hey guys, we are here with Colin Kernan and Larry uh, Kuchenrucker, mm -hmm. right? Kuchenrucker. Mm -hmm. Kuchenrucker. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have been here before, and it's March again, and it's time for March for Meals. Yes. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I, don't wanna, I, I don't know. I was just like, oh, should I get a chant going? Nah. <laughs> but, of course, like uh, you saw in that uh, PSA video, you go to their website, MissoulaAgingServices.org. And you can find out more information about this and more because they have a nice little tab on the very top of their website to go to their link that goes to March for Meals. Very so short and sweet uh, way to do that. And I'll probably talk about this again at, at, the, at the end of this interview. So tell us what is March for Meals for? So March for Meals is the annual fundraiser for uh, Meals on Wheels. And it is... It's going all over the country where we're doing fundraising to raise monies for the Meals on Wheels programs. Great. Um, so Meals on Wheels, what is Meals? Meals on Wheels. We deliver uh, good nutritious food, hot food, to our homebound population here in Missoula County. Um, last year we served over 109,000 meals, which wow. was a record for us. And we certainly couldn't do it without <laughs> our Awesome volunteers, our volunteer drivers like Larry here, and I know you did that mm -hmm. in years past for us too, thank you. Um, yeah, we we couldn't do it without our volunteers and we also couldn't do it without our, our Missoula community. Right. Missoula cares about our older, our older adults and also our disabled population. And so, you know, we're gonna go for right. it again, so, raise those good monies. So part of your month-long campaign, what are some of the events that people can go to to support March for Meals? Well, uh, the, the biggest way that we can support our Meals on Meals program is to do fundraising, and there are many options. Uh, people can do what's called crowdfunding, it's an online donation, or you can do the old school way, get a hard copy form, which you can pick up at Missoula Aging Services or print up off, uh, off of our website. Um, 
but we also are having the, the big event that we have is on Thursday, March 15th, we'll be doing our Community Champions Day. It used to be called Mayors for Meals, and that's when our mayor and several, several of our elected officials um, come and we set them up on ride-alongs. And so they go with one of our volunteers and actually see the program in action. Hmm. It's pretty, pretty cool. So, uh, Larry, what is the program in action? Um, well, we pick up our meals and, and uh, at this, what is it, Providence. Yeah, Providence, pick up our meals. Um, anywhere from 15 to 20 meals. And uh, then we each head out in our own designated route and uh, deliver those meals to the people that are uh, asking for them. Mm -hmm. um, it gives us an opportunity to help people that, uh, that need that help. And uh, so it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling as a volunteer to, to go out and make a difference in people's lives. Yeah. So Colleen, uh, last year I remember that uh, one of the kind of volunteers you need are the ones who pick up other people who can't, are not able to make up their own route. And Larry, you're one of those folks who uh, doesn't have a designated route, am I right? Correct. So you- Super sub. Super sub, that's what you call them. <laughs> so you always look for volunteers, especially for that, to fill in those roles. Yes. They can call upon and be like, I need your help. That kind of thing. Yep, yep, at a moment's notice. And in fact, all of our drivers, we have about 130 wow. volunteer drivers. Yeah, it's impressive. Um, and it covers every, all yep. of Missoula County. Yep. Wow. Even yep. Sealy Lake? Do you have anyone in Sealy Lake? Well, Sealy Lake and some of the uh, smaller communities, they have their, their own programs. Oh, great. But we do still help help the funding for those rural programs. Great. But as far as our our Missoula Meals on Wheels program, we, we do hit all of those areas. We go all the way out, uh, Frenchtown, past Frenchtown, we go the other way, <laughs> like all the way to Rock Creek, the Potomac, wow. Lolo, in the other direction. So we're, we're help, especially helping maintain the independence, dignity, and health of those older adults who are in uh, very rural areas. Yep. So and how can people at home support you guys? They can support us if they would like to come join us and yeah. be a volunteer driver. Uh, the hiring process to be a volunteer at Missoula Aging Services in whatever capacity, um, you, you start right there at the website and fill out a volunteer application and then you go through an interview and then, uh, and then we get you out on the road as quickly as we can delivering meals. So everybody, that's what I was uh, saying to all of our volunteers start out as substitute drivers. And then some, and then as a, a regular route opens up, then we can plug people in, or they can stay stupid, super subs like Larry and several of our other drivers. So. Great. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Uh, what's the number uh, people can reach the Missoula Aging Service by? Missoula Aging Services is 728-7682. And I also wanted to say another event that we're doing um, that we're having will be at the Women's Fair on Saturday, March 10th. And oh. people can also get information uh, about Meals on Wheels and other programs at Missoula Aging as well. Cool. Uh, is there anything else you guys want to say? Larry, do you have anything else to add? It's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to help somebody make a difference in someone's lives. And uh, at the end of the day, you feel pretty good about it. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a heartwarming position to be doing. Mm -hmm. So I'd say don't hesitate to, you know, even for a day, to drive one day a week is... Uh, it, it's helpful. Yeah, and, and it, it makes a difference in people's lives. Well, and so. you know, like, like Larry's saying, every, every client that we serve for Meals on Wheels is homebound to a certain degree. So oftentimes, their Meals on Wheels driver is the only person that they may see in a day, which is huge. So on top of that good nutrition, we're providing that daily check-in, which I think gives a lot of reassurance not only to our clients, but to their families as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks for joining me, guys. You bet. And if you want to support the uh, Meals on Wheels program, March for Meals starts March. And, yeah. it happens. <laughs> and you can find out more information by going to MissoulaAgentServices.org. So thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. You do. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Um, we do get sponsorships for the light show, and we have a community partner in Neptune Aviation. Um, they're amazing, and our board chair is actually their CEO, so we have some tight connections with them. Um, but the light show is moving to the Wilma this year. Congratulations. Yes. Goodbye, Hilton Garden. <laughs> well, we, we love our friends at the Hilton, but yeah. it was just time for a change, and we wanted to get downtown and um, 
So, yeah, we have a live auction and, you know, usually a lamp lady performance that's a surprise. I'm not sure what this year looks like. We might kind of switch things up, but... That's number one maxim of SBJ code. Think about that. That's a hard thing to do, and it takes courage. It takes all the things we've been talking about, accuracy. It takes all the fact checking that we need. The second one is minimize harm. Ha, ah, you notice that I didn't say do no harm. I didn't say what doctors do. Why do you think that is? Because there are times in journalism when you will do harm. When you write a story about a guy who's been convicted of a crime in your town and, and his paper's in the paper, you have done harm. Uh, if you've exposed a, you know, a scheme to build people out of the money, you have done harm to people. But you've done it with, a, with an idea for the betterment of the community, for the safety and well-being of your readers. The third precept, I would say, is, is to be accountable. In other words, you need to f f uh, provide a vehicle for people to come and talk to you and complain and talk about what's going on. And you can't just get defensive right off the bat. And that's a problem that a lot of young journalists have. And I can remember I learned that the hard way. But I had a publisher who said, you need, when they call and they complain, you need to let that wash over you like a rainstorm. You need to listen to every single word of that. I'm always impressed by uh, some of the audio that is that MCAT's able to capture just with a simple shotgun mic mounted on a camera. So anyways, uh, let's talk about some uh, city council stuff. So, um, so let me find my notes. Um, let's kick things off with uh, um, Jan Holm, elder. She's uh, with the organization Elders for a Livable Tomorrow, and she speaks about the wildfires in the season. Because of the wildfires that we all experienced last year, I think they're still pretty prominent in our thinking about the coming summer. One of the reasons we're holding these events now is so that you have time to get your home ready, especially if, if you live in the Wui. If you live close to forest, embers in a wildfire can travel a mile or more. And if they settle on a cluster of leaves close to wood, they can smolder and get a fire going. So what we're going to try to do is educate as many people as we can. Jack Cohen, a scientist who's worked at the Missoula Fire Lab for two decades and studied fire, wildfire behavior and structures that survive and structures that don't survive a wildfire, will be speaking. Um, I'll, and besides learning about what you can do for your home, we'll cover a lot of extras, such as getting a free assessment for your home and its needs, Reverse 911, which was really important in the last summer in helping people who were in a critical area. Insurance. 
what you need to do ahead of time, and the questions that you need to ask your insurance agents. And All right, so uh, that was Jan Holm. And the events that sh they are hosting um, through Elders for Livable Tomorrow will be the first event is happening on March 7th at the UC Theater at 5 p.m., March 11th in Bonner at 1 p.m., March 21st in Up, up Grant Creek, 7 p.m., MCAT, uh, Probably we'll be covering uh, meetings, and we have been covering meetings like this since just last summer. Um, we had one of just November. I think the Missoula Chamber of Commerce did a, uh, a community assess. Uh, it's, it's more like a, um, I guess, a community of the whole um, kind of a state of Missoula. S uh, Missoula City of Commerce does that kind of state of Missoula, and they talk about everything that's happened in Missoula within that year. So that was one of the things they talked about in there as well, and you can check that out if you go to MCAT.org. Anyways, uh, where there's smoke, there's fire, but where there's vapors, there are potential ban on e-cigarettes in taverns, bars, and public spaces in the city of Missoula. Um, 50 minute, 57 minutes into the meeting, and we got to this topic. A lot of people were waiting just to speak on this. Uh, back in 1999, Missoula was the first municipality in Montana to establish an ordinance that banned smoking in indoor public places. And in 2005, officially, the state of Montana went into place to ban smoking in bars and taverns and uh, public areas and workplaces. With a few exceptions, in 2009, the, those restrictions were extended to bars and taverns. Sorry. Uh, but, of course, since 2009, the Missoula Municipal Ordinance actually fell behind the state code because they're the ones that kind of made the state going like, oh, this is a good idea. We should do this as well. And now the, um, now the city of Missoula is like, oh, Helena already has a rule in place for vaping and indoor vaping and stuff like this. So what they want to do is update the ordinance that's already in place, and they want to address e-cigarettes, uh, codify health department smoking shelter guidelines, codify parks and rec rules restricting smoking in certain areas, afford private businesses the ability to restrict smoking within 25 feet of doorways, vents, and other openings, um, clarify enforcement procedures. Um, uh, Melam Laney from the uh, Missoula County, Missoula City County Health Department talks about the other communities already have this in place in Montana. Here's a little bit of background. Um, and then in 2012, the first community to uh, um, change their ordinance so that it include, included e-cigarettes or vaping was actually Helena and Lewis and Clark County. There are currently eight uh, local communities that have broken the trail for us on this go round. So with that, I would thank you for taking it up and thank the the commenters um, in advance for helping us work on this re regulation ordinance. All right, so um, up next we got a person from the Zumuzu County Health Department. She is a tobacco um, prevention officer from the Missoula Ca City County Health Board, and she talks about addiction and the problem with e-cigarettes are not um, a solution, they're just another addiction. Basically, we've done such a good job over the past decade in um, behavior change to make smoking um, less desirable. But now we're noticing this new wave and this new trend of vaping, which is starting to normalize tobacco use and normalize tobacco use behavior here in our community. Um, and what's happening is it's becoming socially acceptable. And because of that, we're seeing that e-cigarette rates are skyrocketing, especially amongst youth, which is really alarming. Um, close to 50% of all high school students in Montana have tried e-cigarettes, and about 23% are current users. So that's kind of scary to think about. Um, and because of that, it's just basically another substance that these kids are being exposed to um, that's hard on a developing brain. And basically, there's a whole new generation that's addicted to this product. All right. So uh, once again, that was um, uh, Kayla Warren. And... Um, what a lot of uh, people from um, some of these uh, e-cigarette shops are saying is that it helps people um, kick the habit of uh, smoking cigarettes. And according to Kayla, it, it's just a new platform for people to start smoking cigarettes. So let's move on to Shannon Terrio. She's the director of environmental health, and she talks about how the city of Missoula can enforce this policy um, in terms of people who don't abide by these new regulations. The police department didn't want people to be under the idea that you could drive down the street, see somebody smoking, and call it in to 911. 
So there's actually not a penalty for people who are smoking in those outdoor spaces, but if somebody refuses to move along, um, move out of that 25 foot area, um, or they, uh, th there is the possibility that the police could be called by the managing entity to help um, deal with that situation. We don't really expect that to happen. Um, Usually when there are signs that tell people not to smoke, people don't smoke there. So that by far and away is, um, is probably what will happen here. Um, and then I already talked about the extraterritorial application. We did work out that uh, a violation of the ordinance is a violation of municipal code. It would go to municipal court and it would be handled by the city attorney's office. All right. So that's kind of the details if you are outdoors smoking in some of these places that aren't allowed. So uh, moving on, um, it's time for that uh, public comment. Uh, Keith Bowman, he's the general manager and uh, part owner of the e-cig and vapor juice store. And this is what he has to say about um, e-cigarettes. Of course, he started his talk with a lot of statistics and talking about how e-cigarettes are a better way to um, quit smoking. But I, I skipped a little bit ahead of him talking about how he feels about this. But putting this ordinance on vapor by not allowing vapor to be tested in the vape shops which is a pivotal part of vaping, will make it so we will not be able to properly train our customers, which could possibly lead to unsafe use as well as deterring people from trying a healthier alternative to traditional cigarettes. People such as my grandma, <clears throat> who died from emphysema, she never got a chance to try vaping. I loved her so much. Please do not take that chance away from other people's grandmas. Give them the opportunity that my grandma didn't, <clears throat> exclude vape shops from this ordinance and actually make a difference. I believe. All right, so that was uh, Keith Bowen. And up next, we got another quote from a public comment and this is uh, Brandon Gregory. He is an employee of eSigs and this is what he had to say. Um, uh, myself, along with almost every vapor that I've met, are respectful about the public's concerns and personal liberties regarding their health and safety in a public setting. We don't vape in bars, restaurants, coffee shops, etc. Um, and in return, I hope that e six shops can continue to be a safe haven, haven sorry, for the current and potential members of the Missoula vaping community to have their questions answered, concerns addressed, equipment professionally serviced, and new flavors tested. Uh, a brighter, longer, and healthier future has been granted to my friends, my family, my loved ones, and myself because of vaping. Uh, myself, along with everybody else, a part of the e-cig vapor juice store family wish to share that vision with our fellow Montanans and as many p people as we possibly can. Thank you for your time. All right. So up next, we got a uh, person who's not a, m a member of the uh, e-cigarette uh, vapor juice store. I, I found it. This is uh, Bonner Harvey, and she talks about, uh, she just kind of just uh, talks very bluntly. And I'm in the process of quitting smoking because I've actually been vaping. It's actually been a lot better. I feel a lot healthier. And if we don't have this opportunity to taste or try or learn in the stores, you know, what's going to happen? Yeah, we should keep it from our kids, but you know what? Kids are going to do what they're going to do. We all did the same. We Parents tried to keep stuff from us. I'll be honest, my grandparents smoked. I started smoking because of it. They weren't happy about that, but I grew up around it. But my, neither my 18-year-old or my 14-year-old smokes, period. They don't even do it. So I think, honestly, that this indoor policy is just a lot. It's crazy because... You know, if you're going into the store, you know what you're going to come into. Then don't go in there. That's all they're there for. You have no business being there, don't go in there. It's not affecting anybody else. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. All right. So uh, one of the many things is that the health code uh, requires is that if there is a smoke shop or any places that have a, a sanctuary for smokers, is that it it doesn't have a, um, a direct connection to the uh air circulation of a building. So evac, basically, you'd have to contact someone with that just to find a way so any smoke or vaping or anything that uh, produces nicotine or tobacco in the air is uh, perfectly filtered out of the area. Um, so, of course, the biggest takeaway from this meeting is that the places that sell e-cig projects should have some language evolved to have some vape shop exemption for those who vape. Michelle Cares talks about this um, and some complications that may arise with Shannon Tario, Director of Environment and Health, response to this. Um, if vape shops were to be exempted, exempted, which the health department does not support, it would be difficult to define what is and isn't a vape shop in a way that would be fair to all retailers. And I just wanted uh, 
someone from the health department to expand on that a little bit. I have some assumptions, but I, you know, about those, they could be wrong. So I'd like to hear like what other sorts of retailer, retailers might be lumped into this or what the concerns might be. Okay, I'll start. Um, so one of our one of our concerns is that um, it, it is how you would define it. So there are definitely more shops than just vape shops that sell vape products, and so you would have to decide at what point are you um, are you selling enough vape products to no longer uh, protect your customers or your employees from secondhand vape basically. Um, when you think about the Montana Clean Indoor Air Act, they don't um, accept um, or exempt tobacco shops and we see this essentially the same way. It's like there's not a reason to exempt vape shops either. Um, there are, there is the potential already in the proposed ordinance to allow um, uh, any business to create a um, smoking shelter and so um, that the, the idea of a smoking shelter is that it's open enough so that there's enough ventilation and that it won't create the hazardous um, clean indoor air space. But to answer your question specifically about what other places sell vape products, I think Kayla would be a better person to answer that. Yes, so vape shops obviously primarily sell them, but they can also be purchased in, in grocery stores, convenience stores, gas stations, so um, working with an exemption like that would be difficult considering the numerous amounts of other businesses that also sell e, like e-liquids and vapes. So. All right, so that was uh, Kayla Warden and uh, Shannon Tario. Um, so let's move on to more of a quote, and people are talking about this. Uh, Julie Armstrong is worried about these uh, uh, smoking, um, um, th these e-cigarettes and machines, um, especially when they first started becoming popular. Is I believe the vape shops are regulated. I think you, you have the liquids dialed in. I think you have the devices dialed in. You are a very small percentage of what's on the street. People are getting things off eBay. They're getting things off of... A, a, all over the place and those things are the wild west so the those liquids and those devices are are the x factor those are the ones that i'm concerned about being in the public space i'm concerned about these things exploding i'm concerned about the heavy metals being um, vaped out with the vapor with those devices like i said hypothetically this is complaint driven i personally don't have a problem with people vaping inside vape shops. I know the health board is going to kill me for saying that, but I do not want people vaping in public spaces. I'm going to tell you that. And I don't want my the businesses to have to worry about seeing vapor and saying, oh, people are smoking in this space. I'm not going to, I don't want to be a patron of this place. So I'm going to vote in support of the ordinance and I'm going to ask for an amendment. All right, so uh, the amendment that they asked for is to give a stipulation of six months uh, leniency towards uh, implement implementation to this update to the ordinance. What would originally be a 30-day deal uh, was amended to be a uh, um, uh, six-month deal. And here is the last quote from Heidi West uh, that that this uh, that. Um, thinks that the vape shop is being a, um, isn't being the source of a problem, but other avenues in place that encourage use and not education like these vape shops said that they provide. And a large part of this is modeling behaviors in public spaces, and I agree with those. Like, I think we should be not smoking in parks and it doesn't matter what kind of smoking it is and I have this discussion with my husband all the time who thankfully gave up smoking but now vapes as is my mom and all of my siblings um, I'm the only non-smoker in the family uh, so I, I really struggle with the vape shop piece of this um, I think it's not enough to vote against it but I'm hoping with the six-month delay maybe um, since this is an area that's a complete gray zone as far as state law goes, and we are an entitlement city, that maybe there's some way we can still come up with a better solution. Um, and I, I guess I would disagree that vape shops are so ill-defined. Um, just 
because I would never consider a grocery store or a gas station a vape shop. Um, and I'm hoping that maybe there can be some better resolution than making everybody retrofit their spaces again. So I don't, I'll support it, but hopefully, but reluctantly. Mr. Hess? All right, so that uh, was Heidi West, uh, and that was the last quote that I have. Six, from, six for months from now, the city uh, did approve this uh, amendment, and then, of course, approved the motion to put a ban on e-cigarettes in public spaces um, that include, like, parks, taverns, and stuff like that. Certain areas of parks, you know, because there's still people who smoke in parks. It's just, like, in the there's certain areas in parks where you're not allowed to smoke in the area, especially like, you know, like imagine like you're smoking a cigarette next to a playground where a bunch of kids play. That's kind of like clear common sense of where you're not supposed to smoke. Anyways, um, you can watch this full meeting at ci.missoula.mt.us. It is a wonderful website that uh, provides you more information about this. This was a long topic, and I kind of definitely breezed through it as fast as I possibly could. But you can um, take the time, and you can watch the whole meeting. All you got to do is go to Yo Government. You go to Agenda's Webcast Minutes, and it brings you to a page that tells you when all the meetings that are going to be taking place in the city of Missoula. If you want to find out more information, um, and if you can't access any of the videos from the uh, city's website, you can go to MCAT.org. MCAT.org is your resource for everything Missoula community. Um, we also offer trainings every Wednesday, so if you are interested in coming down here to make a program of your own, whether it's a civic entertainment type of deal, any uh, music video, whatever you kind of want to do in terms of a visual medium, MCAT is the place to be for all that and more. All you got to do is come down in any Wednesday from five thir at 5.30 for our orientation. And also, just want to give a nice little plug to our spring, spring flicks, is that M MCAT is offering spring camp for kids age 9 to 14. This is happening from March 26th through the 30th. Um, yeah, I mean, it's day, basically during spring break. MCPS is spring break. So if you have a kid who is uh, between the ages of 9 and 14 and interested in stop animation, making movies and stuff like that, we'll have those this camp available from 9 to 3 p.m. to fill those gaps. So um, it is a nice way, and it's only $150. Pretty sweet deal. It's like $33 a day, or uh, $30 a day. Sorry. Uh, anyways. Um, yeah, that pretty much does it. For this topic, I have a nice video uh, courtesy of Graham Martin, who did some behind the scenes of a basketball game that was shot just uh, on February 13th, just before uh, Valentine's Day. So here is a very lovely behind the basketball. Get that workout. <laughs> did you notice anything different about your one long haired boy? Well, he wasn't a long boy anymore. Yeah, I don't have long hair boy anymore. So, Austin will join us, but he's not with us right now to give us comic Okay, he's a... Stop's good job, mate. He's challenging work. Out of doors. Promise you'll never go hungry. Because at the end of the day, as long as there's two people left on the planet, someone's going to want someone dead. I agree. Bench. Jurati! The jar based karate! Save money by spending money. Do that and you'll be rich. We've got to have more money. We've got to have money. The money. Here we are again. Fifth time in a row. Ooh wee. Look at that. Yeah, McDonald's on the floor. Come on, the trash can's right there. How? <laughs> See, this is why Sentinel sucks. Why do I say garbage? Yeah, I'm just gonna move this out for a little bit. Oh, wait, wait. That would have made things easier. Hey, Sentinel, I got a message for you. Sentinel students, pick up your freaking garbage. How good at least does it? Sometimes. Actually, no, not really. No, they're, 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 they might be worse, actually. Hey, Rowan, let's get this party started. <laughs> That, that was not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> well, that was one of the saddest anime deaths I've ever seen. <laughs> Top 10 anime betrayals. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Uh, Alright, now the stairs. My worst enemy. 
Whoa, I did a sneak on you. Woo! Neil's become a table. Oh boy. Oh look, somebody didn't like 2019. Together. A team. Teamwork. Uh, we're all in this together. This song is from High School Musical. <laughs> I thought it was a sh no. What? It's just us three today, right? We got Cole Johnson in the game. Yeah. Pretty cool guy. Yeah. But it's your commentating with them. Ah. Yeah. While well, you're switching. Saving the planet besides this plastic here and this plastic on this. But it's paper otherwise and some wax and you know hopes and dreams. You know inflation's terrible. <laughs> I'm literally scamming myself. I think this is more. And also I'm saving the environment, so take that, God. <laughs> <laughs> right now they have a Muppets uh, exhibit. That's cool. You guys should go there. Yeah, you guys should go to Seattle. Check it out. You know, it might be cool. Or something. I don't know. You know something. <laughs> Closest big city from here. I was trying to allude to our other video. Quick, Graham. Uh, put it up right there. In a little box. Right, no, like right next to my face. Like uh, right here. Okay. It thinks it's right there. Right, right there. Wait. <laughs> right. Here. 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 No. Uh, right above. It's right here. It's right here. It's right here. Right here. Not, no, no. Move it over here now. Okay. And now just put it on my face. Thank you. Which room behind the scenes are you even alluding to? <laughs> <laughs> um. All of them? Yes. <laughs> put them all, all at once right now. But not at the start. At the start, put that video of him acting like, uh, Tommy Wise and out. Thank you, camera. Take it. Take it. That one. Yeah, find that one, ask Scott, you know, and, and then put put that uh, uh, Scott going, yeah. <laughs> you know, there you go. All right. Graham? Hi. Get your stuff, Graham. Okay. Graham. Ah, ah. Oh. And stop. Dang. Oh. Here, trade while I get it on. Oh. You could make it down here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, camera. Take it. Right. Take it. Take it away from me. Hey guys, look. Oh, okay, Tommy was sale. Yeah. No, he's not Tommy Wiseau. Not anymore. anymore. Not anymore. Oh, yeah. Was. I was, but now I'm not. Then he had to go through an identity change. <laughs> and then I had to go through crisis. <laughs> uh, instead of what I said. There's two types of people in the world. The people who uh, try to divide the world into two, into two types of people, and then the types who don't, you know? Is 
<laughs> He's like holograms, dude. He talks about holograms. <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> and then he died. <laughs> you see, it's all a conspiracy, don't you know? What is all this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Quick, cut to the video. Yeah, use that for the transition. He's setting fires everywhere. I'm a pioneer. I'm an explorer. Guys, look. It's a mugging. Wow. Significant amount of, you know. Are you dead? I don't know. What is. Are you dead yet? I will carry this. When you think of uh, snow, um, most things. Snow. Oh, holidays. Oh no, no, no. I, I think of a cold you. war. The cold war. Oh my god, this went on for 15 minutes. Yeah. This is gonna be a lot of cutting. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, it's kind of over anyway. So, who wants to conclude the video? Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's get over some uh, events that are happening here in the city of Missoula. Starting with early artist program at the ZAC. So Jujan Arts Community Center is doing a using classical fairy tales as inspiration. Early artists will learn to tell stories, listening, playing, uh, and tactical art making. Uh, tactile. Um, mixed media exploration guided by professional youth program instructor Carleen Kantner. Uh, Kantner is designed to assist you in the uh, artist and cognitive preparation needs for reading, writing, and learning. And this starts this morning. Uh, Ms. Mo Misa and um, Roots Acre Sports Center is doing all sorts of, sorts of adult tumbling and kids activities from 9 to 12. Many different places basically all doing the same thing. Um, NAMI, Managing Your Life, starting at 10 a.m., uh, a free weekly life skills class for adults living with mental illness issues. Um, no registration is required. Tiny Tales at Missoula Food Bank is at 10.30 a.m. Your kids get to learn nine new words a day, hosted, uh, sponsored by the Missoula Public Library. Sc uh, Scrabble and Bridge is at the Missoula Senior Center starting at 12.30. Um, do some Scrabble and Bridge. It's great. You get to hang out with the Missoula Senior Center, get a lunch, and you get to play some Scrabble and Bridge. Um, making activity at Spectrum uh, Bridge the Gap at 2 p.m. They're building a, they build and program a robot to cross a 15 centimeter gap using Lego Mindstorms. Um, what new ideas can you come up with to get across the gap? You can come join them from 2 to 5:30 p.m. at their 2 Ave 1812 2 Avenue address Spectrum Discovery Middle School Writers go back to the Missoula Public Library improve your writing skills at 3:30 right after school today and do it um, John Floridus is at Great Burn Brewing Company you know all know him and y'all love him come join come let John soothe your soul tonight at the Great Burn Brewing Company at 6 p.m. Um, Men's Capella, four-part harmony singing, River Valley Church, weekly rehearsals of the Rocky Mountain Men's Barbershop Chorus. Males of any age who can hear a sound and match a pitch are invited to come to rehearsals. And that's at 7 p.m. at River Valley Church. Improvised stand-up comedy open mic night. So if you don't want to be a uh, official uh, comic and you want to do more of the improv stuff, Badlander is doing a 7.30 p.m. Um, open mic stand-up for anybody who just wants to d improvise. So make all your greatest anxiety dreams come true by signing up for a set or come watch other people do it. Stand-up comedy without a safety net. And it's free. And sign up starts at 7 p.m. and starts at 7.30 p.m. And also um, tomorrow is the first uh, Thursday of the month at the Union Club. They'll be doing another comedy night at the Union Hall. So... In the next room, or the vibrator play, is going to be at the University of Montana, and it's been playing for the last week. And set in the 1880s, this comedy manage, uh, manners was inspired bizarre historical fact that uh, at the time doctors used vibrators to treat hysterical women and some men. Um, the play centers on Dr. Givings, his wife, Catherine, and how his new therapy affects their entire household. Audience discretion is advised as uh, mature language, content, and situations because it's a vibrator play. And the show is run um, tonight at 7.30 p.m. And it runs uh, till March 2nd, March um, 3rd and 4th. They have uh, 2 p.m. matinees. So here's some of your late night events um, starting tonight. Um, 
You got Brains on Broadway Trivia, so if you want to do a trivia night, you can go to Broadway Bar and Grill. You can go to Silver Slipper. I, I believe you got a Thomas Mar Bar, has some bingo night. Um, Missoula Open Deck Society DJ Dance Party at VFW. Um, beer trivia, Trivial Beer Suit is going to be at the Press Box. Rockin' Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. And Craptastic Karaoke is going to be at the Badlander after their open mic comedy night. So here is a art clip, and it will end. So this art clip is the last, oh wait, it's going to end after this weekend. So March 5th is the last play, but I'm going to play for you today, and I'm going to play for it once more on Friday when I talk about your first Friday events uh, this Friday as well. But I'm going to talk about your Thursday events right after this. And that's going to be at the Zootown Arts Community Center um, up until March 5th. So you have until this weekend to check it out. Um, let's talk about some Thursday events happening for Thursday. Uh, March for Meals kicks off tomorrow. Um, Missoula Museum Services join the, uh, <coughs> the month-long march to raise awareness for funds for Meals on Wheels, a program of Missoula Agent Services. And, of course, they were just here talking about this on my morning show. So you can find out more by watching that interview by going on to my website, wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. Family fun time at the Missoula Y. YMCA is hosting a family needs a place to play together. Family fun time at the Y provides an indoor all-weather place play where parents are welcome to join in the fun. Bounce houses, tumbling mats, scooters, hula hoops, and more. And this is happening um, Tuesdays from 9 to 11.30, Thursdays from 9 to 11.30, Fridays from uh, 3.30 to 5 p.m. Nice little after-school program for, um, for families and um, uh, kids alike. Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 12.30 noonish. Um, so that's what's happening for uh, Family Fun Time at the Y. And that's the YMCA on Russell Street. So five simple website changes to increase converse conversions sorry Missoula Inger area uh, Missoula area chamber of commerce is hosting a highly valuable topic of co um, converting visitors into customers through your website you can expect easy tips to implement immediate presentations in a straightforward way you won't be led astray with this techie talk if you want your website to help grow your business this class is for you and it's at the Missoula chamber of commerce at 11:30 a.m tomorrow and this is part of of this you'll be led by joe uh Burnich of big west marketing incorporated and author of the service Bu business money machine so um it helps local business owners clarify their website so they can actually get results all right moving on our next topic is make it and take it crafts the big sky branch since it's early out 2 30 p.m missoula public library hosts uh big at the big sky branch big sky high school um, library hosts a make it and take it branch at big at uh so the whole idea is you make crafts and you get to take it home with you and you can call them at 728-2400 the quintessential mcps number and their extension is 86 8605 starts at 230 um, family team building family's first children museum does a lot of uh um, sponsored events that help parents uh help raise their kids and find out ways that helps um, some kids who have difficulties and some parents who also have their own difficulties when it comes to raising kids because a lot of times a difficult kid never usually comes from uh, usually comes from a difficult parenting so create a feeling of teamwork within your family 
uh, is as important as your goal, whether you are looking for some fun activities for a large family reunion or a small family trying to build a te- up of a team fa- uh, a team feeling, consider starting some structured team building activities that are perfect for family members of all ages. And this is a class that happens from 6.15 to 8.15 p.m. And it's going to be held at Lewis and Clark Elementary School, which is 2901 Park Street. Um, you can find out more information about this class by going to MissoulaClasses.com. Homegrown, homegrown Comedy Open Mic, uh, of course, uh, tonight is their open mic improv comedy at the Badlander at 7.30. Tomorrow night at 9.30, you sign up at 9 p.m., and this is a, um open mic um, comedy night for uh, aspiring comedians uh, because coming up this uh, month is a comedy uh, showcase showdown for a lot of comedians who want to show their stuff off and be the best comedian of the Missoula area. So um, this is a great way to see if you're actually funny enough to join this competition. And here are some of your late night events happening for your Thursday night. Uh, starting tonight at the Plonk, you got some live jazz at 8 p.m. Timber Rattlers is going to be some folk music at the Top Hat Lounge. Rockin' Karaoke is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Karaoke is going to be at the Dark Horse. And, of course, the Homegrown Comedy is going to be at the Union Club. And those are some of your Thursday night events uh, curving out your weekend. Um, Let's see here. Do I have anything else I want to show you guys? I kind of showed you that. I kind of showed you that. Yep, yep, yep. It looks like I got everything that I need to show you guys. I want to remind you that every uh, Saturday we have our Saturday drop-ins from 1 to 5 p.m. We're going to start advertising our uh, summer camps this uh, this week as well. Starting this Friday, um, MCAT's going to be uh, at an event at the Missoula Children's Theater, MCT, which is off Broadway. And we're going to be doing an event there from about 5 to 7, 5 to 8 roughly. And it's going to include our VR setup. We're going to do some stop animation. But it's mostly going to um, encourage kids to join our summer camps this summer as well because we're going to be offering uh, four different summer camps. Um, which include a zombie camp. Oh, actually, we're three different. No, no. Yeah, four four camps. Animation camp, uh, zombie camp, uh, and a, f- uh, a time-traveling camp, or as I like to call it, MCAT at the fort. So MCAT will be going to Fort Missoula for a history camp. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think that kind of covers everything that I need to talk about tonight. Once again, I want to remind people who are interested in coming to MCAT and doing a show or b- producing a show or being part of the MCAT community, which includes basic filmmaking and making movies. That's the whole idea of MCAT. Um, come on down, 5.30 p.m. orientation time. Um, if you want to uh, inquire, you can call us at 542 6228, otherwise known as 542 MCAT. You can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org. If you're interested, um, yeah, just even can even can drop by and just stop by. You can also go to our website, MCAT.org. Or if you want to find out more about my morning show, you can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice we made you write it out twice, plus the wixsite.com in the middle. So Without further ado, I want to end my show, and I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. There was a lot to talk about, and there will be plenty of t- to talk about this Friday. I got your art rundown for your first Friday, and I also got a f- flagship Friday for this Friday. And it, it, today is the last day of February, so goodbye, February, because tomorrow is March time, and uh, it's time to march on out of here. Uh, and for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful morning. Mm-hmm.